the next thing we want to look at is uh, clustering. So this is a, a completely different type of um, unsupervised learning. In this one, what we want to do is we want to essentially, if we have um, I'm clear this, sorry. If we have some data that's unlabeled, it looks like this, we want to find these clumps in an automated, automated fashion. Right? We can kind of look at this by eye and see that there's a clump here, there's a clump there, there's a clump there, there's a clump there. And we want to know um, if we have an algorithm that can find these clumps by itself without us having to tell us, uh, us having to tell the algorithm where it is. And uh, one of the um, algorithms that does this is k-means. So you can see right here what I did is I instantiated my k-means estimator with four clusters. I fit it to the x data, and then I predict the I predict the labels from this x data, and then scatter the results. And you can see that the k-means found these four clusters by itself. So this is an unsupervised algorithm in the sense that just by looking at the data itself, it can, it can come up with a set of probable labels for certain clusters in the data. And just, uh, and what I want to do right here is give you a, a sense of how k-means works, um, because it's, it's a, this fundamental idea of an, of an algorithm that leads to convergence for problems like this that's actually applicable in other places as well. But the, the k-means algorithm, the way it works is expectation maximization. And this is an iterative process where you, where you apply a recipe over and over, and eventually you get to labels that are something like this. So the iterative, iterative process here is really simple. You guess some cluster centers. Oh, this isn't, isn't formatted very well. Here, let me do that. There we go. You first guess some cluster centers, and then you repeat this until it converged. You assign the points nearest, you assign these points to their nearest cluster center, and then you set the cluster centers to the mean of those points. And you do that over and over again. So just, just to show you uh, how this might work, I, I made this little animation. So the first thing we do is we guess cluster centers. So we have the turquoise, purple, red, and yellow. This is just a random guess, and we're not doing very good, right? Step one, what we do is we take all the points, and we assign them to the point to the cluster center that's near, most nearby. And now step two, we compute the mean of all those points, wherever they are, and update our cluster center guesses to that mean. And then we have our new cluster centers, and we start over, right? We assign all the nearest ones, we compute the mean, move the cluster there, and do it again. We assign the nearest, compute the mean, move, assign the nearest, compute the mean, move, and you can see that as we do this, we eventually those cluster centers kind of end up converging, and now none of the points are changing, so we've reached the end of the algorithm and we have our clusters. And so this is, this is known as expectation maximization, because you are um, here assigning the points, you're saying, what do I expect the points to be, and then based on that expectation, what's the, what's the maximum likelihood for our cluster centers? And then you repeat over and over again. And this expectation maximization algorithm is something that pops up all over the machine learning literature. Um, so this, I, I should say that um, I'm not proposing k-means here because I think k-means is a good algorithm for data mining. Um, I actually would almost never use k-means for anything in, in real astronomical data mining because it's just it's, it's too simple. And the other thing is, you need to know exactly, you need to tell it how many cluster centers there are. So it'll, it'll happily go, if we tell it that we have three cluster centers, it'll happily you know, iterate away and, and try this algorithm, and you know, eventually it'll converge on something that might look good or might look not. So this is, how, this is what happens if you try three cluster centers, it converges to that. Or you can tell it that you know, I have five cluster centers, and you know, let's, let's go back to the beginning check out how the five cluster centers move. Um, so k-means is, is nice because it's an algorithm that's easy to understand, it's easy to get an intuition for what it's doing, but the end results are not necessarily something you want to, want to use. Um, the other thing is that um, it, it can be easy for k-means to get stuck in situations where um, 
and converges to results we say are wrong. And it's, it's often hard to measure what's going on there. But, but we, can, uh, we can use k-means for some interesting things. So let, let me show you uh, with our, our digits data that we love to take a look at. Let's see what happens when we apply k-means to, to digits data. We're going to say that we have 10 clusters. So we're looking at that digits data we've seen before, and we're going to ask, basically, we're going to ask to predict the digit labels without giving the estimator any information about what those digits are. So this is kind of cool, right? We, this is like, this is, this is blind uh, data analysis. We have no idea what we're looking at, but we want to know what's there. So it's, it's relatively simple. simple. We say we want uh, k-means with 10 clusters. We predict the clusters, and then we um, look at the cluster centers. We have, a, we have 10 cluster centers that are each 64 bit vectors, or 64 element vectors. And this should, this should uh, interest you right here. This is 64, this is an 8 by 8 image. So each of these cluster centers is actually an image sitting out there in space. So we can plot those. And this is what our cluster centers look like. So these are the, the clusters that um, k-means has found in the digits data. We have, well this is a 9, a 5, a 4, 0, 6, 3, 7, 2. The 8 and the 1 are a little bit maybe mixed up, a little bit weird. But from that, from the cluster centers, we can ask, um, well I should, I should say one thing, We're, the, the cluster centers are not in numerical order, they can be given any permutation, right? Because we, we have no idea what they are. But just for visualization purposes, I'm going to reorder these clusters to make them uh, match the labels that they're closest to. And now what we can do is we can use our PCA visualization and we can look at the learned cluster labels. So these are the these are the cluster labels that are learned without from the unsupervised technique without any input. And we can compare them to the true labels. And we, we see this is really cool, right? We've, we've learned that these digits are all the same. And the true labels tell us that these digits are all the same. You know, we've learned the zeros, the ones, the twos, whatever all these are. And um, just for fun, we can look at this. And the, the accuracy of our, un, our simple k-means uh, clustering for this, these digits, the signing labels based on no information at all, is 80%. So we managed to get 80% of the digit labels correct without even knowing what they were to start with, which I think is really cool, right? So, um, and just as we, as we saw the other day when we did this sort of thing, we can plot the confusion matrix, and we see that ones and eights are mixed up in our clusters. So we saw that a little bit, right? The cluster centers, ones and eights seems to be a little bit mixed. Um, and what else is, is off? True value of 8 is all often a 1. If the true value is a 5, we often call it a 9, so we have a few of those. And if the true value is 8, we also often call it a 9 as well. So this is, this is just a cool thing. And um, yeah, I, I don't want to go much, much deeper on that about k-means, but this is just to show something, something cool you can do with it. It's a way to, to explore your data, learn about what sort of bunches of, of things there are in the data. Um, we have that. But I should emphasize again that we told it from the beginning that we have 10 clusters, and there's no, there's not really a good way to ask k-means how many clusters we should have in our data. So that's one weakness of it. But a related, um, uh, this is an exercise I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over. It's kind of an interesting thing that I've used in a tutorial before. Um, a, a related technique that, that we can use um, instead of k-means, is something called uh, Gaussian mixture models. And this is sort of a generalization of k-means that uses the same expectation maximization algorithm, but instead of, instead of looking for hard-edged clusters, it's looking for how you can make uh, Gaussian models fit to the data. And I really thought, Oh yeah, yeah. The next next section, I'm doing that. So we'll we'll look at Gaussian mixture models next because this is an this is an algorithm that's like I said is a generalization of k-means, but it's actually something that you might want to use on your data. And I've actually published papers that use scikit-learn uh, Gaussian mixture models to do interesting data analysis. This is re real stuff. You know, it's not just a toy thing. I I love this I love this little algorithm because it's it's just so intuitive, right? You just just step through the data and you, 
you see how it works. And this is what's going on in 